Welcome to Azam Sharp Weekly, and we will be continuing to work on our store application using the SIFUI framework. So right now, if I run the application, if I go to the category list screen, I should be able to look at the all the categories. I can go to a particular category, and I can see all the products. I can go ahead and also add a product if I want to. Now, what I want to do is to go to a product detail screen. This means that I should be able to tap any of these products and it should take me to the product detail screen. So, how can we do that? In order to go to the product detail screen, we must create a new screen and we should call it product detail screen. I'm going to go ahead and add a SIF UI view. You can call this view anything you want. I'm just going to call this product detail screen that's just a view and i'm just going to type in over here product detail screen so i know that this screen will represent the product detail screen it only has a text right now we will implement that later but the first thing we need to do is from a product list screen which displays or list all the products we want to go to the product detail screen let me go to the category list screen and pin this so I should be able to see this in our product list screen. And there we go. Okay. So, in order to make the navigation, in order to perform the navigation, uh, we need to wrap this product cell view on line number 18 inside a navigation link. So, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and say navigation link. I am using iOS 16, obviously, so I should be able to use a different overload for navigation link. And I'm also able to use navigation destination, navigation stack, and all that stuff. So over here, I'm just going to go ahead and provide a value. So what value you would like to pass to the navigation destination? And probably this value will be passed to the actual product detail screen. So in our case, it will be the product itself. The label basically means that this is what will be displayed to the user. So in our case, it will be simply the product cell view. All right. Now, in order to pass a value to the navigation link, that particular object needs to conform to Hashable. The product right now does not really conform to Hashable. So let's go to the product and we can make it conform to the Hashable. Let's go back now. All right, now let's go ahead and go to the furniture. And now you should be looking at these indicators that are already popping up. That's because our product cell view is inside the navigation link. Now it's not really going to go anywhere. If I try to click on any of these things, it's not going to do anything. All right, so we still have to implement something called a navigation destination. So I'm going to go ahead and put a navigation destination over here. This is going to be listening for any kind of a value that will be product. And now we can say that, okay, where do we want to go? So in the navigation destination, which will only be fired if the value is set to a particular product, and that's what we're doing over here, it's going to give us a product, and now we can go to a different screen. And that screen can be our product detail screen. We can go ahead and pass in the product in the product detail screen, keeping in mind that at this particular moment, the product detail screen does not accept a product in its initializer. So let's go back to the product detail screen. And I'm going to go ahead and add that product. This means that in the product detail screen over here, in the preview, we need to do something so, so that we can easily get that particular product. So right now you can see that it's not doing anything. Uh, it, we need to pass in something. Now, right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and put the code in there, even inside a navigation stack, so we can see the navigation bar. But all of this, it's so ugly. I mean, it's not a good idea to put the whole product uh, in the code right over here. I would be more comfortable if I am reading this from some sort of a JSON response, which we will cover hopefully in the future. All right.
All right, so let's go to electronics or electronics. You can see electronic doesn't really display anything, something wrong. So we need to take care of that. That might be on the server, but we should probably display a message that's not able to load electronics. And in the furniture, we can go to the product detail screen. Great. Now in the product detail screen, what we want to do is we want to display a couple of different things. So let's go to the product detail screen. We'll select that. Okay, it doesn't really display anything. You can see it just says product detail screen in a text. So let's replace that with something. And over here, it's kind of up to you what whatever you want to add. I'm just going to go ahead and add a product dot description so we can show the description. There we go. We can see the description. All of these things that you're seeing are being injected by our preview right there. Okay. Let's go ahead and add a bit of padding. And we can also set the navigation title to the product.title so that we can get the product title. Great. Now the product title is too long. You can see it's kind of like cutting off. So we can actually fix this. We will implement the initializer. I think you can also do it in on appear, but we can also do it over here. And we will set the UI label. If the UI label is inside the navigation bar, then we can adjust the font size. And let's see if we try to adjust it. And there we go. It actually looks much better. You can see it's no longer cutting off. All right. So if the UI label is inside the navigation bar, then adjust the font size to true, which is great. Now, if this title was a little bit more longer, much bigger, then it will shrink a little bit more. Okay, so inside the VStack, what should we do? Well, we would like to display images. We will also like to display the price. Now I can go ahead and try to display the price by saying product.price. But price is a number, right? So we can't really do that. So I'm going to go ahead and say format the price to be currency. And we're going to use the whatever the locale that current currency code. And there we go. We can get the 623 displayed. Everything should be aligned on the leading. So I'm just going to say alignment leading. Great. And maybe even get a little bit of a spacing. Let's say 10 is fine, I think, for now. Maybe you can add 20. Now, if you go back to the category list screen, and select furniture or something, you can see the price is displayed in this rounded rectangle in a nice way. But if we go to the product details screen, you can see that the price is just displayed 623. We can always go to our product cell view and copy all of this stuff. But I think that is the one that's displaying the price. Come back to the product details screen and paste it over there. So all of these modifiers, we can place it. And now we can see that it's displaying 623 in a rounded rectangle, green color background, white color text, everything is working. The problem with this approach is that we kind of like copy pasted this code. And next time, if we want to display the price somewhere else, we will copy paste this code again. Not really a good idea, right? We should make a custom modifier or a view modifier, custom view modifier that can do this easily. All right. So I'm not going to copy paste this again because I don't want to, you know, copy paste, copy paste everywhere. I will create some sort of a custom view modifier. So let's go ahead and write it out over here. Create a custom view modifier for, you know, all these styles, style for the product price. So that is our kind of like a to do item that we would want to do. All right. The other thing that we need to do is we need to display all the images. Uh, there are certain images for each, you know, each particular item. So let's go ahead and try to display those images. There are many different ways of displaying the images. I can use a scroll view if I want to. And the scroll view in horizontal fashion. I'm going to use the S tag because we want the items to be laid out horizontally. And now I can go ahead and run a loop 
on the product.images. And if it's null, then we're going to use an empty array. The ID for the images, we'll just use self. Each image URL is different. We will get the image URL. And now we can use the async image. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy out the async image, control or a modifier or the view. And there you have it. We're able to display all of these things. In the end, I'm going to go over here and put a spacer so everything is kind of like moved up. And there we go. Much nicer. And it is a scrolling thing, so we can scroll it. So this is our actual screen for our product detail screen. Now let's go ahead and work on this part. I don't want to do this again. I don't want to copy paste it. So let's remove that. And we are going to create a custom view modifier. So how do we create a custom view modifier for our application? Well, in order to arrange it a little bit nicer, nicer, I'm going to go ahead and say view modifiers. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and add a brand new modifier. Let's go ahead and just say a file. And I will call it bordered caption. You can call your modifier anything you want, but we're just going to call it bordered caption. All right. I can remove this particular pinned item. Okay, that's fine. Import Swift UI. We will create a structure. We'll call it bordered caption, which is a view modifier. When you're implementing view modifier, you will have to implement the body. The content will be passed to you. The content will be the actual thing on which you're applying the view modifier. All right. So if you want the user to change the background color and the foreground color, you can expose them as properties. So there we go. And this means that these properties should be set somewhere. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and create a struct. OK. And now we can go ahead and use these properties to, to create our body. So you can see I pretty much copy pasted the same thing that we were doing in the previous code. And that is what we end up, uh, you know, end up with. Now we can create this or use this border caption right now, but it would be a much better idea to create some sort of an extension on the view so that it allows us to easily use it. Instead of passing the bordered caption as an instance, we're just going to use a modifier. So I'm just going to go ahead and say over here a new file, and I'm going to perform a, an extension on the UI view. This means, oh, sorry, on the view, not the UI view. UI view is UI kit. So I'm going to perform an extension on the view, and that is why I have to rename this. It's on the view. There we go. So the view, we're extending the view, and on the view, basically every view on Surf UI for Surf UI, it will have this option to perform bordered caption. They can pass in the background color if they want to. So background color, which will be off color. If they don't pass it, well, then it will be just green. And for the foreground color, if they want to pass it, they can do that, or else we'll just use white color. And this is going to return us some sort of a view. And this is where we can use a modifier and then use the bordered caption. So bordered caption passing in the background color, which is background color, and the foreground color, which is foreground color. All right. And we need to make sure that we are returning this correctly. Let's see what's going on over here. Uh, return type instance border caption required some view to conform. I would just say conform to view modifier. Okay, let's uh, probably I've made a mistake over here. Let me go ahead and copy this. There we go. Okay, there we go. Done. And now we should be able to use this in our code. So let's go to the product cell view. In the product cell view, which is used to display, well, a cell, 
one cell. You can see that right now all of these styles are being applied, which creates the green, you know, the background and the rounded circle. Instead of that, how about if we just say border caption? And there we go, done. Now, if somebody wants to change the background color for some reason, then we can go ahead and pass in red and it works. So we have reduced a lot of code uh, just by creating a view modifier. And this is really reusable. So I can go back to my product detail screen and I can apply it over here also to my actual text that was displaying uh, all these things, all the values. All right. So I think this is a great way if you see a lot of code, a lot of modifiers being used on a particular view and you are copy pasting, copy pasting everywhere, stop that, create a view modifier and start using the view modifier. All right. And that is pretty much it. Let's go and run our application. I'm going to go back to the category list screen and see if we can look at different things. I'm going to go to furniture. I have a lot of furniture over here. And all of this is fake, by the way. You can see that it displays nicely. I can go and select some other things. There we go. Very nice. And looks like it's working really nicely. If I have a little bit of a longer name, I can't really find anything longer over here, I guess. So you will see that it will try to fit it in the title. You can see it's fitting out. Everything works. Great. So in this video, we learn how to create the product detail screen and also to create a custom view modifier so we can reuse it. Thank you. Hey everyone, if you like this video and want to support my channel, then check out my new course on iOS development using UIKit and Swift project based learning. This is a brand new course that I just released and I found out that a lot of developers are still using UIKit and that's perfectly fine and they wanted a course on UIKit and also Swift UI. So this course is mainly I would say 90% UIKit but there's some parts that we will try to integrate with Swift UI application or Swift UI views. And this course is currently on sale. So you can see if you use the promo code launch day, then you will be able to get it at a very discounted price of only $9.99. And this deal only lasts for three more days and then it will be over. So make sure to grab a copy of this course. This is around seven hour course. You can see it was just released, already had close to 100 students registered and it covers a lot of projects. A uh, search project uh, basically for the map kit, a budget app with the core data, and a store app which is using the UI kit. Everything is programmatic. I'm not using any storyboards, so I think you're gonna really enjoy this course. Thank you so much, and thank you for your support.